Hello there. So in today's video, I wanted to sort of talk a bit about um, the law and like how the law revolves around self-defense and you know what your thoughts might be on that. So I know this is going to obviously vary based on what country you're in. There might be you know subtle differences or complete differences. Um, so as far as the way that self-defense law works to the best of my like, immediate knowledge I'm not like a complete legal expert or anything but yeah, in the UK they have this concept called sort of reasonable force so the amount of force that you uh, can legally use to sort of defend yourself it can vary quite a lot based on the severity of the situation so there's a lot of room for interpretation um, so say, say someone's just trying to push you around, that's okay to sort of maybe push them back or like just a bit of a slap type of thing just to sort of get them off you or just to let them know that you don't want to mess around or anything like that. But if you go on full on trying to like beat the hell out of them then that's going too far. And sort of, you know, if, again... It scales up so because it's reasonable force. If someone's trying to like kill you, then it's okay to like sort of do whatever you can to get out of that situation as well. You, sometimes, even if you end up killing them accidentally in the process, it could still it, it kind of there's a lot of variation. And also, something that some people I've heard of like this little trap is if you manage to deal with the threat and then you keep going, that will get you like in trouble. So if you say you are attacked by someone and you manage to like get them down on the floor, pinned down, so they're not really a threat anymore when they're secured on the floor, then and then you keep hitting them after that, you, up to, to the point where you've got them on the floor, that's legal. And then when it goes to that point where you're hitting them while they're uh, unable to defend themselves then that's like the illegal use of force it's a lot of uh, sort of room for interpretation there and um yeah it's one of those traps that people can sometimes fall into because it's it's you know once all the emotions are going it is a very sort of emotional situation because you get a big like adrenaline rush you have to act on instinct almost so if you're not aware of how the law works and I know, technically speaking, it's everyone's responsibility to, like, know what the law is. But um, obviously not everyone actually studies what the law is or, like, the details of it. So not everyone would necessarily understand that once it gets to the point where they've actually dealt with a threat, that's where you have to sort of stop or you'll get into... And you won't legally pass that point be counted as doing self-defence. So... Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's tricky. I think for the most part, it's as far as like written law works. Obviously, it's tricky because it's got to have a broad sort of application. I think for the most part, it works quite well. Like I said, the only major issue or like slight issue is the fact that if you're not super aware of how the law works, you could potentially fall victim to like the the heat of the moment and accidentally do something that could get you in trouble as well. For something that wasn't your fault you know being attacked um but yeah so let me know what you think about self-defense law what you think could change about it or if you think it's good as it is that's in the uk anyway if you have your you know, some other type of self-defense law in a different country then yeah talk about that instead so yeah just a bit about self-defense law what you think about it and i'll see you uh, in the next video